Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Baxter Student Ambassador Program webinar of our 2022 season. My name is Dan McDonald, Sales and Marketing Development Associate with Baxter Media, and I'm here with, I'm here with Alicia Nguyen, one of our student finalists from Centennial College. Now, just before we get into things, I'd like to give an enthusiastic shout out to our program sponsors this year. We have Manulife, Propel, powered by Tourism HR Canada, ACTA, the Association of Canadian Travel Agencies, TIO, the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario, and Skull Canada. Thank you for helping to make BSAP a continued success. I'd also like to let everyone know that at the tail end of this webinar, you'll have the chance to submit a question or two to Alicia. To do so, please type those into the Q&A section of the public chat box or the chat box itself, which are both towards the right-hand side of the screen. And remember, this is a live session, so your patience is appreciated during any technical difficulties that might arise. And without a further ado, I will now hand things over to Alicia. Welcome, Alicia. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, I'm sorry for my background. <laughs> no, that's okay, no problem. Um, there we go. Can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, it's showing your first slide there. All right, perfect. All right, so hello everyone. Welcome to my presentation today. My name is Alicia and I'm currently a um, six semester student at Centennial College. My major is hospitality and tourism administration. And today it is my honor to be here as one of the finalists for the Baxter Ambassadors, Baxter Media. So the destination of my choice is Thailand. So why Thailand? I actually had a chance to visit Thailand when I was in high school. It was a one-month trip taking me to Laos, Cambodia, and Thailand. Thailand actually stole my heart at that time, which is the reason I decided to stay in Thailand to explore different parts of the beautiful country. All right, so here's what I'm going to cover today. Um, that would be general information about Thailand, what's in Thailand for travel agent, how travel agents can make money from Thailand, advice to be given to clients, some tools and travel insurance. So what about Thailand? Thailand is one of the biggest countries in Southeast Asia. It is located in the central of mainland Southeast Asia with the population of around 66 per 77 million people. The capital city of Thailand is Bangkok, located in the eastern part of the country. Bangkok is the name the foreigners used to call, but Thai people actually call their capital city Krum Thep Mahanakot. Just like many other countries, Thailand is diverse when it comes to ethnic cities, leading to a variety of languages being spoken in Thailand, in which they sanitize the official language. The primary religion of Thailand is Buddhist. About 95% of Thai people are Buddhism or are influenced by Buddhism. This had affected significantly on Thai's culture, architecture, and laws. So this is just a tiny piece of information about Thailand tourism. The 2019 is considered the best year of travel in Thailand with about 39.92 million tourists visited the country within a year. It is the major number that cannot be beaten by the neighbor countries. So what are the reasons for the development of tourism in Thailand? That will be two main reasons. Thailand is unique for its landscape and experiences. Thailand offers every kind of tourism experiences except from skiing. If you want to do skiing, Thailand shouldn't be the option. The second reason is that it is commissionable for travel agents and tour operators to sell tours to Thailand the commissions can be built from airline commissions, add-on experiences, travel services, accommodation, insurance, and bundle tours, which we will dig deeper later on. So what's in Thailand for travel agents? This picture are for you to have an idea of what will be included in trip to Thailand. The country has an amazing number of Buddhism temples, which can be seen in every corner of the country. It's also had two very different beach scenes, very close to each other. The beach scenes are unique and can't be found in any other part of the world. Thailand is also home to various national parks and wildlife sanctuaries, proving that the country is very dedicated in protecting nature and animals. As, a, as an animal lover, Thailand is definitely my place to visit. Thai cuisine is also the most try when visiting Thailand. It is influenced a lot by the Perm Burmese and Chinese culture and cuisines. All right, so the first place that we're going to talk about is Bangkok. As the capital of Thailand, being one of the most visited cities in the world, 
Bongo is famous for plenty of things. Our synonym for delicious food, wire party nights, and authentic culture, the Southeast Asian megapolis is the beacon for all kind of travelers. And indeed, no matter what your budget is, no matter how old you are and what you enjoy the most, Bangkok got you covered. Bangkok is also home to a lot of historical and relative sites, with a lot of shopping center in which Central War Mall is one of the world's largest malls. To the northern part of Thailand, many Thailand visitors head to Bangkok or the beaches and island in the south, but northern Thailand is also offer a staggering range of amazing destinations. Jungles and breathtaking pristine scenery can be found throughout the regions. Mountain trekking is possible and many small villages are filled with locals who live life far differently than Thais living in big cities. So whether you want to see elephants in their natural habitats or visit hill tribes, Northern Thailand can offer them all. So the most famous city in the Northern Thailand is Chiang Mai, like the must visit on your list. Chiang Mai is one of the historical cities located in the northernmost of Thailand, also referred to as the Rose of the North. It is famous for historical temples. The most famous one would be Phratato Suthep. And picturesque mountains, cool weather, and scenic views. You will also get a chance to visit indigenous tribes here who are still following their ancient custom and traditions. And because the mountain peaks around Chiang Mai's weather is cool and pleasant, unlike Bangkok, especially if you get a chance to visit in October or November, it's super cool and amusing with light breeze. Chiang Mai happened to be the paradise for animal lovers. It has an elephant sanctuary for entire of uh, four retired elephants where you can spend your day playing, feeding, bathing with them. Not to be missed is Chiang Mai Night Safari, which you can visit open side tram get a chance to have to hand fit white animals one of the best tourist attractions in chiang mai are visiting local ancient tribes who are following old customer traditions so i'm talking about indigenous tribal villages in thailand which is also a tourism experience that attracts lots of tourists to chiang mai so in here, the Homong tribal village is the most visit place and it's an eye opener for tourists into real tribal life. And Karen Long Neck tribe is also a worth visiting tribe located in Chiang Mai. So I went to Chiang Mai a couple of years ago and I had a chance to visit um, the Karen Long Neck tribe. I was very surprised because the children in the tribe is actually very good at English. All right, so let's go to like the most exciting part of Thailand, which is the southern part of Thailand. Many travelers who head to Southeast Asia plan to spend at least some of their time in Thailand. Some Thailand is, South Thailand is a very special popular region because it has such a diverse range of attractions to offer visitors. Once you head south from Bangkok, you can admire the view from stunning bays, discover island gateways, or explore beautiful natural park. This part of the world has something for everyone. Southern Thailand is where you can do a whole bunch of adventurous activities, such as parachuting, skydiving, or aquatic sports, like scuba diving, coral diving, snorkeling, kayaking, boat riding. The beach scenes in th Southern Thailand are unique. The beaches in the west and the east are very different when, even though they are not so far from each other. This is the unique feature of Southern Thailand beach that cannot be found in any other place in the world. The West Coast of Thailand has an array of activities to offer very high tourists. Adventure can be found there, as Thailand West Coast is the favorite for those who enjoy surfing, scuba diving, and rock climbing. So talking about the Western coast of um, Thailand, Phuket will be like the biggest island on the Western coast of Thailand and in Thailand in general. Phuket is the biggest, Phuket has the largest uh, Chinese influence, so coming to forget, you won't see a lot of Chinese shrines and Chinese restaurants around the city. Being a big island, Phuket is surrounded by many magnificent beaches such as Rawai, Patong, Garon. Apart from what nature brings to the island, Phuket is also the most vibrant city in the southern Thailand with various bars, clubs, and European resorts. This is also a place 
of the Phuket Pride Parade, which is the largest parade for the LGBT community in Southeast Asia. Thailand is the country that is very open and friendly to LGBT people. LGBT are super welcome and treated very nicely in the country. Oh, and also the Phuket Elephant Sanctuary is the largest elephant sanctuary in Thailand. So some key tips for um, customer visiting Phuket. South Coast Beach are typically crowded, while the North is more tranquil. So it's just based on um, customers' um, re like prefer preference. We can recommend the South Coast or the North Coast of Phuket. So um, the second um, famous city in the West Coast of Thailand is Krabi. Krabi is also located in the western coast of Thailand. However, the beach scene and atmosphere in Krabi is very different compared to Phuket. Krabi is more relaxation, where people come to enjoy beautiful heat and sunshine instead of nightlife, bar, and clubs. Krabi and Phuket are also the places where you can get scuba diving certification. Just like Phuket, the best time to travel Krabi is mid-November to April, which is the dry season of the region. So about the East Coast, the East Coast is seemed to be like smaller than the West Coast. With its many versatile islands, the East Coast of Thailand has something for everyone, especially those willing to do island hopping, cruising, or participating in full moon party, which is the most excited experience on the Eastern Coast. The prettiest island on the Eastern Coast include Koh Phang An, the Koh Samui and the best time to travel would be from December to June, which is the dry season in the area. This is also the home to the full moon party, which you can see at the picture below. This is the most like excited experience that must visit when you're in the East Coast. And the East Coast is also famous for a lot of like island hopping and cruising and party. So here are some of the super cool accommodations their special stays that you can actually experience in tropic region. Jungle accommodations, tree house, and floating raft are what tourists definitely be excited about. I had a chance to visit Jungle Raft House when I visited Thailand a couple of years ago. Feeling like living among nature with river in the front, mountains and hills on the back, and forest surrounding, and it's not expensive at all. And I only paid like $30 for one night for a single room. And for now, if you want to travel to Thailand, you can definitely go to booking.com or Agoda because there's a lot of good deals for um, hotel rate with special stays, which is super cool. And some of the outdoor activities. Um, Thailand are super is very famous for aquatic sports like scuba diving, core diving, snorkeling, kayaking, and boat riding. Parachuting, skydiving, and rock climbing are what you can experience to the south of Thailand. But if you want to do like mountain climbing, better to the north. All right, so let's go to the most excited part, commissionable items, like how travel agents make money. And why they should be interested in Thailand. So first of all, is airfare. Thailand is located on the other part of the world, which is very far from Canada. The flight, therefore, has a distant commission built in. Therefore, also because there's literally no direct flight from Canada to Thailand, you must stop somewhere. This is also an opportunity for travel agent to make money as you can try to sell accommodations for a couple of nights during guest layover. Also, as the flight to Thailand might take 20 some hours, there is an opportunity to upsell cabin class. So I work at the Travel Corporation as a sales consultant, and there's a lot of time clients call in to book trip to Thailand. And when they want to book air, I always tell my clients, you know what? You made a great choice visiting Thailand. The country is super beautiful, and you won't have a lot of fun there. However, I just have to let you know that the flight might take 20 some hours. You might be tired of the long flight. What do you think about upgrading your cabin class to premium economy or business class so that you will have more legroom and be more comfortable with your flight? We can offer you some great deals at a reasonable price. I actually believe that it would work because I tried it multiple times and clients will be likely to book better seats for their long flight 
which is also brings more commission to travel agents. Their second commission item would be the bundle tours. Again, Thailand is very far from Canada. So if people travel to Thailand, probably not only to visit Thailand, but also Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, a lot of people visiting like Angkor Wat in Cambodia from Thailand are not by flying directly to Cambodia. It's very profitable to offer bundle tours as the length of stay will be longer, which is the reason why a lot of tour company like Conti Key, G Adventure, True Fogar, Cost Saver, um, Kensington Tours, from youth brand to middle class to luxury brands, they offer bundle tour because it's super commissionable for travel agents and for the tour company. All right, so back to the commissioned item here. Um, another super commissionable item is add-on experiences. Add-on experiences can be like some pre or post days in a destination. For example, our guest can travel to Thailand from Canada to join the trip, let's say a um, Thai Island Hopping Quest tour. So it's totally to the south. So instead of flying directly to Phuket International Airport, he can fly to Bangkok and do it one week in Bangkok in Florida before going to Phuket to start his trip. This open tour flight would open a lot of commissionable opportunities for travel agents. Travel services. Canadian people um Canadian people are able to travel to Europe Europe or Mexico or like Cuba, Caribbean um, without needing travel agents because they share many commons when it comes to culture and even language. However, to destinations that far away like Thailand, totally different cultures, lifestyle, and language, people will likely to book travel services, which bring more, which bring money and commissions to travel agents. And also we can offer insurance to customers, not because it's source of commissions, but also to ensure guest safety in the event of injuries, fly delays, or package loss, because sometimes it happens, especially when it's like the long flight with multiple connections. Travel insurance. So some of the travel insurance, um, like reliable in Canada, include Manulife, Blue Cross, or Lion Global TD Travel. They actually offer like multiple plans, but here I just list like um, what their Travel insurance cover. So travel insurance should cover emergency medical expense, trip cancellation, interruption, package lot or damage, and flight travel accident. Um, so minor like would be like uh, the most reliable and is also the insurance partner for the travel corporation. So let's come to um, some tools for travel agents. So some of the tours for travel agent might include your advisor, where you can get lots of reviews about accommodations, restaurants, and experience in Thailand. Agoda and Booking.com are for looking for the best rate. I would prefer Agoda for Thailand trips because Agoda focuses more on Asia and can bring up some very great deals. Lonely Planet and Thailand Tourism website place at the travel booklet where you can learn more about different destination within the country and some travel tips. All right, so let's wrap up. Why travel agents should be excited about Thailand? Firstly, Thailand offers all kinds of experiences to tourists. It has beautiful waterfall, rainforest, lots of Buddhism temples, national parks, and animal sanctuaries. It had unique speech scenarios that cannot find anywhere else in the world. Thailand is cheap to visit compared to the Caribbean. You can stay in a luxury resort with half price of Caribbean. Secondly, Thailand is far. Fly brings a decent commission. The open draw opened a lot of add-on experiences, which is the, ma the major reason, the major source for commission for travel agent. And also because it's far and culturally different, people will likely to book travel services and travel insurance. Thirdly, we can offer bundle tour with destinations including the neighbor countries of Thailand, 
like Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam. Bundle tours book from tour operators also a very good source of commission for travel agents. Sometimes travel agents can make like 12 to 15 percent, like 8 to 15 percent of commission booking from tour operators. All right, so that is the end of my presentation today about Waterphone Thailand and how travel agents can make money from Thailand tours. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Alicia. That was excellent. And yeah, we'll open it up now for any questions that the audience may have. Uh, Ian Stalker from Baxter Media said, great looking pictures and visuals, Alicia. How scenic do you think the destination is overall? Um, so overall, Thailand scenic views are um, different uh, from the north to the south. So to the north, like I said, it's more about waterfalls, national parks, um, history, and a lot of like um, Buddhism temples, and even like rice terrace. But you can't see those things in southern part of Thailand. In southern part, all that you have is the beach sceneries, um, beaches, and do some like uh, adventurous activities and beach resorts. So literally like no discovering culture, no rice array, no national park to the south. Great, thank you. And do you think tourists realize what's available? Do you think tourists fully realize what's available in Northern Thailand or do they generally stay in the south? Um, actually, I think like, like I said earlier, the Northern part of Thailand is known because they have a Chiang Mai, which is like um, one of the best destination in Thailand. So, Chiang Mai is actually what makes people know about Northern Thailand. So not all the time that people go to Thailand just to for the bitches. Because I know that a lot of tourist companies like Trafalgar, Kon Tiki, and Kensington tours, they offer a lot of tours like to northern part of Thailand. And Chiang Mai is what makes them go to the northern part of Thailand. Uh, excellent. Thank you. And uh, here's another question from Ian from Baxter Media. Should tourists view Thailand as a beach, nature, or cultural destination, or all three? Um, Thailand can be all three. Thailand, if Thailand can be more than all three, so Thailand opened a lot of opportunities for uh, Southeast Asians uh, destinations for neighbor countries. Like I said earlier during my presentation, so the bunch of tours, like people travel to Thailand not only to see like culture, nature, um, national park elephant sanctuaries or beaches in Thailand, but they, it's also like the gate where you can go to like Singapore or like you can visit Siem Reap, Angkor Wat, Cambodia, or you can visit Laos, Vietnam. It's also like a gate. It opened a lot of like opportunities for tourism in Southeast Asia. And it makes like people know about Southeast Asia. Oh, Southeast Asia has like wonderful place like Thailand. Let's go to Southeast Asia. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you for that thorough answer there. And uh, Alicia, what would you consider to be your dream job? Um, my dream job is to be a travel agent, <laughs> to be honest, because um, I love the way a travel agent work, like how we can give advice um, for clients. So like, I know I, I want to do like travel agents for the FIT, the Flexible Independent Traveler, because like when we can give client a tour that they want they will love us so that is what i like about the job of travel agent and also like as a travel agent we will have a lot of relationships in the industry which is super cool absolutely yeah and being able to make those connections that could be beneficial not only for your clients but for you and your family as well yeah that's right definitely yeah i couldn't agree more uh, so I do believe that's all the time we have for today. So I would like to thank everyone that attended this webinar today. Thank you all so much for being here and for supporting the Baxter Student Ambassador Program in its eighth year. And Alicia, thank you so much for your fantastic presentation. Yep. It was great having you here virtually with us. Thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> it's my so, uh, honor to be here, honestly. Oh, yeah, definitely. Congratulations again on being named as a finalist uh, for the 2022 season. And me or one of my colleagues will be in touch with you over the next few days. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye now.